Joe. I think it's Joe Saluzzi. So you're right on. And you've been right on the entire time. And, and Lee, Lee is a long-term investor. And this is what people are missing in the argument. When a long-term investor has a conflict with a short-term investor, the SEC's mandate is always to side with the long-term investor to facilitate capital formation like Mark's talking about. That's what the SEC is supposed to be doing, right? Now, how did we get into this? supposed to be doing and, and, and doing are two different things. I, I have, it, I have the, the testimony from, from Mary Shapiro, or at least the commentary that Mary <laughs> Shapiro is giving to Capitol Hill today in the summit that they're having, and in it, she says that after the flash crash, the agency, and these are her words, were well positioned to respond. Baloney or what? Well, it took five months to create a report. Well, of course it's baloney because it took, there's no consolidated audit trail. There's really no way to reconstruct the events of May 6th. And it took five months and it still was kind of a, of a patchwork. They don't even have the futures market in the consolidated audit trail proposal. But, but here's the issue. 15 years of regulation got us into this fragmented market. 15 years of things like Reg ATS, decimalization, Reg NMS, which you talked about before and in the along the way the real market maker who had obligations to their customers when they were trading got lost and they left they left the markets there's no more economics in a form now they've been replaced by this by the automated market maker right who doesn't have any customers they trade proprietarily this is what people don't understand why does liquidity disappear all long -term of a sudden investors because you don't have that, long term investors drove that phenomenon as well Without a doubt, they drove down costs so that brokerage firms and brokers couldn't make money. And now they're going to blame uh, HFTs. Steve, the brokerage firm didn't force on uh, decimalization. Basically, a lot of these innovations the were by the SEC, the desire to you know, uh, uh, reduce trading costs, reduce the spread between the bid and the ask, etc. And I think they've driven it to a point where the brokerage firms are no longer profitable in this line of business, so they're exiting it, which I think is negative long-term for the market. Mr. Right. Cooperman, um, you know, I guess calling the, the markets a, a, a casino, is that, is that a bit extreme? I mean, so, some I know, may... Uh, some was up six points at one time today, down six points. It doesn't seem to have any kind of logical, you know, movements. And I, I think understand. these are all... Look, the high-frequency traders, the, the proponents of them talk about the liquidity they create for the market. What is the quality of that liquidity? They go home flat at night, they come in flat in the morning, and they have their average holding period. Uh, 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 Joe could tell you, I think it's like a minute or two it's or three. But, but you know, so, some may say it's, it's ironic that, that a man who's beaten the house, so to speak, uh, throughout his entire career now wants to change the business. I, 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 I don't, to be honest with you, uh, I'm going to benefit from all of this stuff. Hey, I'm not going to be victimized because, you know, I have a terrific team of 17 analysts working with me. We're calling our companies directly. We're not relying upon Wall Street research. To the extent that Wall Street research goes away and creates more inefficiencies, the people that have the ability to do the research and can afford the resources are going to do better. But sometimes I advocate things that are not in my self-interest. The system is broken. There's enough events that have taken place that suggest there's a problem. And when you talk to Duncan Niederauer, I believe he'll say that 70% of New York Stock Exchange volume has nothing to do with fundamental investing. It's the high-frequency traders and the slicing and dicing of ETFs. Okay, we know Scott, the public Scott. has left the market. Yeah. Why? Right, and here's the problem, Lee. What's going to happen is that since the industry didn't self-police and let this fester for years and years, look what the Europeans are doing right now. The Europeans are talking about banning things and stopping things, and they're going to come in heavy-handed. The SEC hasn't gone anywhere near there, but you don't want to ban things. We're, we're not against and saying you can't do this, right. but you do want to smartly attack the issue. Get rid of the payment for order flow. Why wouldn't, wouldn't you ban it? Wait, wait, wait. You, why wouldn't you ban it? You well, haven't given one good reason why it should exist. Well, Mark, you can do things that will make it go away. In other words, take the profit and send Look, it the reality away. of It'll technology is on there's always the law of unintended consequences. The key is how you respond when you recognize things didn't go the way you expected. Now we got to respond. But just saying HFT is there doesn't mean you should keep it. Yeah, Mark, that's a very good observation. I, I'm just kind of a, a gradualist. I'm saying it is a, a minimum. There's a hue and cry from professional investors like myself that they made a mistake by taking out the uptick rule. Why don't they Not basically reinstate it for trial period to see whether some of these shenanigans go away and whether the market acts in more rational fashion? The public doesn't understand the market. A large number of professionals don't understand the market. This is not good. we got to deal with it. We, we, we will. We appreciate your time. I'm not going to let you run without giving me a comment on the markets either. How do you see things like this? Right Basically, what we're talking about here, my name is Mario. Stockmarketfunding.com has been around for 30 years in the buy and sell. And we are an advocate 
because of the high frequency trading algorithmic programs have destroyed the day trader we have been on top of this for a number of years we are extremely advanced in high frequency trading technologies we built our own platform and what Mark Cuban and the other gentleman is saying and what everyone is saying is that there isn't any regulation in high frequency but we built this application and each one of these lines and each one of these diamond alerts is those high frequency robots they go down and they go up and yes it isn't fair to the regular people just like they said on TV even the professionals can't keep up they need to be here and even the people who want to get involved and take advantage of these things we can show you how to do it with simple limit orders please wake up and smell the roses so lots of big players now are on top of this the SEC is finally getting on top of it stockmarketfunding.com has done many live videos on high frequency trading we try to point out these discrepancies what broker dealers go through we come from that era back when day trading started when we introduced it in the early 90s in the mid 90s and where we are at in the world today is a lack of regulation and people are getting the advantage we have said it time and time again and it's all the more reason for you to get here because I can tell you right now you're not going to be able to weather it emotionally you're not going to be able to weather it and you're not going to understand the mechanics of high frequency I can show you how to beat them with the limit order and I will give you and I will do it live in front of you I do it every single day that's what all the live videos on the site are about they're all high frequency trading you want to see Chipotle Mexican Grill that was a high frequency trade down thirty dollars inch a day and when that frequency when they crossed the bid and those robots started selling it down hey it went straight down and it ran renegade twenty nine dollars and seventy two cents how do I take advantage of high frequency let Chipotle Mexican Grill be that what about Apple high frequency in this name we got short again up here down ten dollars eleven dollar and five cent range high frequency crosses the bids and that's selling down the bid that supports a short and the put option when they're walking it they'll buy the ask and just run it to who knows how high they'll go but at some point the high frequency models do change their algorithmic programs and their software we built our own remember listen if you want to take accountability for you then start by signing up for the free five-day trial get in here let me show you live with the entries and the exits and let me show you in the bid and ask what they do and what all their tricks are because you will be doing yourself a big favor and due diligence to yourself to oneself so what I will tell you is how to beat them, how to put it in your favor, and how to make a fortune off it.